the assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency Alexander de Croix, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Belgium. May I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Alexander de Croix, Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Belgium. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, how encouraging to see the General Assembly meet in person again. When I stepped into the solemn hall, I felt a sense of relief. Don't we all yearn to get back to normal? But is this sense of relief justified? And what is the normal we can actually hope for? Can we feel relieved when COVID-19 is still all around us and too many people are not vaccinated? Can we be relieved when, for a growing number of people, climate change is becoming a matter of life and death? Is there room for relief when human rights are being challenged in so many places? All over the world, people who are perceived as different are confronted with hate speech and hate crimes, with discrimination and with abuse. Can we really feel relief when the new normal for women and girls in Afghanistan is to go home, keep silent and stay inside? No. We cannot. Let me quote Secretary General Dark Hammergold, who was murdered exactly 60 years ago last week. The weakness of one is the weakness of all. And the strength of one is the strength of all. That is why Belgium remains strongly committed to multilateralism, to an international order based on the rule of law, the founding principle of our United Nations. Only through common action we will build common strength. Only through multilateralism we will provide long-term answers to today's complex crises. Which vulnerabilities then require our common action? I see three. The first vulnerability is COVID-19. We need to bring this pandemic to an end. It is now almost two years since our lives were turned upside down by an unprecedented health crisis. And I would like to express my deepest appreciation to healthcare workers in Belgium and elsewhere who continue to battle this deadly virus. Belgium is among the top vaccinated countries in the world. 85% of our adult population is fully vaccinated. But Belgium is also a leading exporter of vaccines, accounting for two-thirds of all European exports. We are one of the world's vaccine powerhouses, and we acted like one by keeping trade lanes open and exporting over 530 million vaccines to the rest of the world without ever imposing an export ban. If we are to overcome this pandemic, vaccine solidarity is a crucial condition. Since no one will be safe, until everyone is safe. It is therefore unacceptable that today less than 4% of Africa's population is fully vaccinated. As Hammergold said, the weakness of one is the weakness of all. As long as the virus continues to circulate, the risk of new variants is there, and no one will be safe. COVAX is the best mechanism to strengthen vaccination solidarity and to close the global vaccination gap. Belgium has already donated 1.5 million doses, and by the end of the year, we will donate a total of 4 million vaccines. With close to 3 billion euro pledged to COVAX, the European Union is one of its major donors. But we must do more. We must also boost local vaccine production through technology transfer and sharing of knowledge. That is one of Team Europe's objectives. At least 1 billion euro 
will be invested to this end. And as we speak, a Belgian private company is working with partners in Senegal to start local vaccine production. We also must prepare for the next pandemic, even if the present one is far from over. A new pandemic treaty will allow us to be better prepared, build resilient healthcare systems, and increase access to decent healthcare and quality medicine. And we need a transformed World Health Organization that is fit for purpose to lead these efforts. The coronavirus took the lives of nearly 5 million people, and it also had a devastating impact on our Agenda 2030. It halted and even reversed many of the recent positive developments. Extreme poverty is on the rise again for the first time this century. Economies were pushed into recession. Fragile countries were struck harder than others. Yet, Giving up is not an option. As the Secretary General said in his report, our common agenda, we must usher in a new era of universal social protection. Not one country can cope with these unprecedented challenges on its own. That is why Team Europe is pooling efforts and resources to assist the most vulnerable countries. Belgium is proud to be part of this collective European effort. So let's not lose courage. Yes, we must build back. But we are faced with an important choice, an opportunity even. Do we continue with business as usual, or do we do things differently? Salam amen. This brings me to a second vulnerability that requires our attention. The climate crisis and the urgent need to put sustainability at the heart of all of our efforts. The report published last month by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is unequivocal. The increase in CO2 concentrations and the global temperature is unprecedented. All regions of the world are now seeing the harmful impacts of climate change and more quickly than forecast. This summer, Europe and my country were severely affected by extreme weather conditions. 41 of our compatriots lost their lives during these floods, the worst that our country has ever seen. Our nation was stunned. Faced with the brutality of the forces of nature, many of us felt small. We will rebuild, but this will not be enough. We cannot simply fold our arms and wait for the next floods, the next heat wave, or the next extreme drought which will kill once again. We must act, and we must do so now. This makes the UN Climate Conference COP26 in Glasgow the most important meeting of the recent years. With the Green Deal, the European Union intends to be climate neutral by 2050 and to reduce greenhouse house emissions by at least 55% by 2030. We hope that more countries will follow, follow Europe's ambitions. This transition to sustainability is not only a cost. It is also a major economic opportunity. It triggers innovation and it drives new growth. It is the future our youth demands. That's why Belgium will double its wind energy capacity in the North Sea to remain one of the global leaders in offshore wind energy production. We will increase investments in renewables, and we have the clear ambition to become one of the most important hubs in clean hydrogen supply. Our common mission in Glasgow is crystal clear. We need to, to do whatever it takes to limit global warming to the Paris target of one and a half degrees. Building the resilience of the most fragile countries will be an important part of this effort. That is why we must deliver our financing commitment of $100 billion and why Belgium plans to increase its contribution to international climate finance. It is quite literally a matter of life and death. If we fail to act on the climate crisis, we will not only lose more lives, but global tensions, instability, and insecurity 
will increase. This brings me to the third vulnerability, our international security. 20 years ago, the attacks of 9-11 did not only change the city, they changed the world. Five years ago, my country was also attacked by terrorists. Like France, we are bringing terrorists to justice, but we have not defeated terrorism yet. Terrorists continue to claim innocent lives, as they did recently at Kabul airport. Belgium is one of the founding members of the coalition against ISIS. We actively participate in the fight against terrorism, with military deployment and with stabilization and reconstruction efforts through UNDP. Throughout the Sahel, our bilateral cooperation encompasses both defense and development. Indeed, security is not sufficient to ensure stability. And we cannot close our eyes to the aggravating humanitarian situation. The failure to prevent conflict often results in the failure to protect human dignity, with people losing everything. My country is a major humanitarian donor. Belgium's budget for humanitarian aid was 200 million euro last year. During our Security Council tenure, we attached great importance to humanitarian issues, such as humanitarian access to Syria. In the same vein, we will continue to help Afghan people with humanitarian aid. Belgium will do its part in line with our commitment announced last week in Geneva. The world cannot turn its back on the Afghan people. Yes, humanitarian assistance is necessary and needed to save lives. But only tents and food will not be enough. I see an important role for the United Nations in remaining close to the people of Afghanistan, to provide humanitarian assistance, but even more to prevent the country from imploding. Turning our back on the Afghan people would come at a high cost. A population plunged into extreme poverty will fall victim to extreme ideologies or will do anything to leave the country. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, these three vulnerabilities, health, climate and security, are a threat to human rights and their universality. For Belgium, peace, security and development are not possible without a profound respect for human rights. In every crisis, in every war, women and girls suffer first and suffer most. We are concerned by the appointment of a Taliban government that does not reflect the political, religious, and ethnic diversity of Afghanistan. Afghan women and girls are already bearing the brunt. They are tear gassed beaten, dismissed, locked up at home. We will continue to monitor their rights. They must be able to go to school, to work, to live their lives in freedom. Societies where women are respected and equally represented, where they thrive and become teachers, society leaders and CEOs, are stronger and more stable societies. Twenty years ago, Belgium played a crucial part in the adoption of the Durban Declaration and Programme of Action. The fight against racism is of paramount importance to my government. Racism, anti-Semitism and all other forms of discrimination and intolerance are unacceptable. We need to challenge and end racial injustice. In doing so, we will shape a society that lives up to the promise of the fundamental equality of all human beings. The universality of human rights is the cornerstone of the modern international order. It is an essential obligation for all states. That universality is all too often questioned. More than ever, we need to reaffirm that human rights are not a favor. They are an obligation everywhere for everybody. Too many women and girls still fall victim to human rights violations. Same-sex relationships are still considered a criminal offense in too many countries. Belgium will continue to be a voice for LGBTI people. We will not let our guard down. For all these reasons, Belgium aspires to become a member of the Human Rights Council for 23-25.
Mr. President, these global vulnerabilities threaten the very fabric of our societies, our ways of life. They can only be addressed by a collective answer based on a dynamic multilateralism. No one is safe until everyone is safe. It has become our guiding principle in fighting the pandemic. It is the present day translation of Hammer Gold pointing out that the weakness of one is the weakness of all. No one is safe until everyone is safe. Let this be our common objective when it comes to climate, security, and human rights as well. Let that guideline inspire our actions every day. I thank you. Au nom de... On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Belgium for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.